Yes, I'm in my pajamas. It's fine, we're fine. What? Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Kirsten's Corner. Today I have a spoiler-free book review for Because of Dylan by Erica Alexander. As always, before I jump into the video, there are two free resources linked down below with trigger warnings. This book definitely has a lot of them, so check them out. I won't be discussing them because I don't like knowing triggers going in, but if you have something that you definitely can't read, check them out. Now, before we jump into the video, I'm gonna do another shameless self plug per usual. I am eternally grateful to everyone who watches my videos, but at this point, I think 97% of my viewers are not subscribed to my channel. I'm so grateful for all of the views, but it also makes my heart really happy when I get more subscribers. So if you feel so inclined, it would mean the world. <laughs> all right, let's jump into the video. Okay, so this is a Kindle Unlimited book. It is available for free if you have Kindle Unlimited. And then, which I guess technically doesn't make it free because you're paying for KU, but like, does that really count? Girl uh, math. So this is actually number three in the Briar, not Briar U. That's the other one. This is actually book number three in the Riggins U series by Erica Alexander. And why does this keep happening? This is why we don't wear pajamas when we film. So like I said, this is book three in the Riggins U series by Erica Alexander. I didn't read the first two and I don't really see myself reading the first two, but we'll get into that later. <laughs> So as far as the format of this video, I'm going to do what I always do. I'll give you a spoiler-free synopsis. I'll jump into my six categories, character, plot, setting, execution, writing. Yeah, that's it. And <laughs> then I'll send you on your way. So as far as the synopsis, honestly, this is just going to be kind of a stream of consciousness thing because there was so much, so much going on in this book. And it's not a classic romance. It says it's a slow burn romance and it is. The first time that the characters even remotely discuss a relationship is at 75% of the book and they're actually only together once in the whole book. Now I love slow burn romances so it was fine for me but if slow burn isn't your thing maybe skip this one. So we follow our main character Becca and most of the viewpoints are from Becca's point of view. We do get a couple from Dylan's point of view and then at one point we get one point of view from a different character but I'm not going to get into that. Becca is our main character. She is a senior at Riggins University and she is there for social work. She has always wanted to be a social worker. She had a really, really, really traumatic childhood, which they do talk about in detail in the book. So just be aware of that. And now she is at college and she absolutely loves her major. She loves her work. She loves her clinic. She loves her intern, like everything. She loves it all. And she's never actually told anyone about her past or her struggles or anything. She just kind of sleeps around to, um... <laughs> She just kind of sleeps around to kind of, it's her way of coping with her past. And one day when she is at one of her clinics that she does for her major, she sees a flyer for survivors of sexual abuse. And she has never talked about her past with anyone. However, this is a an anonymous, you can either chat or you can call or whatever. You can anonymously talk to someone who will help you. And throughout the story, we follow Becca as she is almost every single night, kind of revealing her past to this therapist that she's talking to, typing on like AIM, <laughs> what am I thinking of? Typing on like live chat, you know? And then also on the phone. And so we follow that and we learn about her past and it's honestly heartbreaking, but we also see her make incredible strides mental health wise, which was also incredible to read. And on top of that, we also follow her. She has two best friends, River and Tommy. River is her best friend ever. And Tommy is this guy that everyone thinks they're hooking up, but they're not. They're actually just super great friends. However, Tommy's brother is who Becca calls Professor Dick. He is a gorgeous young man. He's a professor in ethics. However, he really doesn't get along with Becca. They had like a shaky past, whatever. And lo and behold, by the end of the book, Professor Dick, aka Dylan, and Becca are together. And that's all I'll say. There's so much that happens along the way that I can't even... It just unravels itself. It's like a big ball of yarn and it unravels along the way and I don't want to spoil anything but it is it's it's actually pretty good okay 
it wasn't what I thought it was going to be going into it. I solely picked out this book because it's an age gap romance or it's advertised as an age gap romance. It doesn't read like an age gap romance at all. So as far as characters, we mostly just have Becca and somewhat Dylan. You are on a journey with Becca for the entire book. There's incredible character development and not only do you see her present development, but you also see so much growth from her past to now and you learn so much about her past. It is truly incredible character work. Now we also learn a little bit about Dylan and Dylan's past. You mostly learn this through conversations between Dylan and Becca. However, still really interesting. I didn't really care that much about Dylan and quite honestly I didn't super buy the romance between them. Uh, I got that there was attraction because they both are really attractive people but just because two attractive people are like talking to each other doesn't mean that there's chemistry so I was kind of missing the chemistry. So as far as plot this was not really a plot driven book it was an incredibly character driven book which I love. I don't like a plot driven book. If there's things happening on every page I'm like getting whiplash there's nothing happening like I don't like it. This book didn't have any plot and I liked it so if you need plot maybe this isn't for you. As far as the setting, this takes place at a small liberal arts college either in Vermont or New Hampshire. I'm not quite sure. If you know me, you know I'm a sucker for anything that happens in New England. Uh, I want to say, I want to say it's Vermont because I think the book I'm reading right now is New Hampshire. Uh, so it's a small liberal arts college in Vermont. I loved it. There was a lot of like snowy days. They, it was in winter semester uh, and the beginning of fall semester, uh, spring semester. So there was a lot of ice on the roads, like small town bars kind of vibe. As far as execution, um, I think the author wrote and executed a really good book. However, I don't think that it is marketed or portrayed as the book that it is. It is very much so a character journey for Becca and very not much so a romance. There was no romance, not an inkling of romance, not a mention of romance, not a suggestion of romance until 75% through the book. And even at that, it was barely because then, you know, there's the third act conflict and that takes up like what, 15% of the book. So barely any romance. It was executed well. However, it was not executed well for what it is portrayed as. Uh, as far as writing, it was a KU romance, so there were a decent chunk of typos. I feel like a lot of KU romance books don't have a great editor, uh, but that's okay. It didn't really hinder my enjoyment of the book. I definitely caught them and some of them were glaring and I was like, how did you miss that? However, I still obviously knew what the author was trying to say. The last category is entertainment, which quite frankly, I don't want to be mean. I don't think I would have finished this book if it were not for my having read it on a ride up to a ski trip and a ride back from a ski trip. It wasn't keeping my interest. I didn't care about the characters. I love a book where I need to know what's happening with the characters and this book didn't have that. I do feel like most age gap romances do. So that was definitely disappointing. I don't think it was an entertaining book, honestly. I do think it was worth the read and I am happy that I read it. However, I don't think it was very entertaining and I probably wouldn't have read it if I hadn't just had it on my Kindle for the like four hour car ride. Okay, so that is it for this video. I probably recommend this book. It definitely isn't like taking the cake as any new favorite or anything. Definitely worth the read. It was I think like 300 something pages so it wasn't too long. If you like slow burn this is definitely for you or if you like a book that is light on romance. I'm definitely someone that doesn't like the characters to get together at 20% and then just be together the whole book. I get so bored and so sick of reading about them hooking up. However, if you do like that, this book probably isn't for you. <laughs> so as always, thank you so much for watching my channel, for, to continue, for continuing to support my videos. If you made it this far in the video, leave a ski emoji in the comments down below because for some reason that came up a lot in this video. Uh, and until next time, happy reading. Bye. <laughs>